The Ordinary is a fantastic skincare line when it is used properly. But unfortunately, there are a lot of bad skincare routines out there. <laughs> and the internet is not a library, it is a dumpster. Today, I want to talk about the specific products from The Ordinary that you should not mix, from the ones that can be dangerous to the ones that are just straight up annoying. We'll start off with the dangerous ones, specifically multi-acids and how that can hurt your skin. Now, we have done videos in the past on generalized ingredients you shouldn't mix. But today, if you're using both of these products together, or if you see someone else who is, please just keep this video in the back of your mind. Or in your watch later playlist, or text it to yourself, take a screenshot so that you don't forget. Although many active ingredients and products have different names, some of them can have a similar effect. And when it comes to salicylic acid and an AHA BHA peel, these are essentially both chemical exfoliators. Salicylic acid is excellent for acne, and an AHA BHA peel is fantastic for acne scars and other skin issues. However, these both work by exfoliating the skin. Now, if someone is using both of these in a routine together, and if it is not medically recommended by a dermatologist or professionally advised by an esthetician, you should probably not be mixing these. Acids and chemical peels work by peeling away at the skin. And even though these are two different products with two different names, if you layer these together, they have an even stronger impact. And again, in a medical setting or in a medical aesthetic setting, if a patient or a client has worked up to high levels of acids, a professional could totally administer these. But unfortunately, mixing these things on your own, especially if you haven't used them before, can lead to skin irritation or light level chemical burns. And unfortunately, I've been down the YouTube wormhole, I've watched some of the ordinary skincare routines, and I have cringed myself the entire way through. <laughs> Salicylic acid is also part of this next combination you should avoid, but for a totally different reason. The Buffet is a very popular peptide serum from The Ordinary, but they also have the Buffet plus copper peptides. What's interesting is that the copper-infused formula has a very high pH. Let me see if I can look it up online. The Ordinary is great because they list the pH of all of their products. When we look at this, um, it says that the Buffet plus copper has a pH between 6 and 7, which means it's high on this pH scale. It's actually more basic or more alkaline than the human skin, which is around 5.5. And in general, it looks like it's supposed to work in a more basic environment. Now, salicylic acid or even other acids such as glycolic or lactic work better in low pH environments. If you have a 2% salicylic acid, you can actually make it penetrate into the skin deeper depending on the pKa level. Basically, there are other factors that are involved into how well an acid can penetrate the skin. And in general, the lower that pH level, the lower the potential hydrogen, the better penetration you're going to get from an acid. The salicylic acid, I believe, generally has a pH of around 3, but again, if we actually check the Ordinary's website, it says that the salicylic acid uh, has a 3.2 to a 4 pH. Now, what happens if you mix an acid and a base? Essentially, they cancel each other out. And if you're using both of these at the same time in your skincare routine, they're basically canceling each other out on your face and at the least not being effective. Again, there are ingredients such as retinol. Retinol works best at a pH of around 5 to 5.5, and the skin is naturally around a 5 to a 5.5. So if you're using a retinol product to get the most benefit out of it, you want to use it on your skin the way it is naturally. Whereas if you are trying to use an acid and get that to penetrate into the skin, you're going to want to put that on in an environment where the skin's pH is being lowered, either by the other ingredients in here or by the other ingredients that you're using. So again, if you have that luxurious $28 copper peptide serum, don't use it at the same time that you're using your salicylic acid, just because these work best in different pH environments. Simple fix is just to use them at different times a day. Now this one gets a bit controversial. We're talking about niacinamide and vitamin C. There's been some myths and misinformation floating around the internet that you should not combine these because the vitamin C binds to the niacinamide, turns it into niacin, and it's toxic. That is not true, unless you are under very specific heat conditions or very specific formulas. So then people started saying, don't worry about vitamin C and niacinamide, it's not gonna do anything, it's totally harmless. And especially when it comes to consumer products, that's generally the consensus. However, I have a huge issue with these two. This is my ride or die, the niacinamide 10% and 1% zinc for kind of tightening up pores and helping with oil production as well as redness reduction. And this right here is the vitamin C suspension 30% in silicone. These two products are just straight up annoying together. 
On its own, the niacinamide and zinc serum kind of has a tacky feeling when you put it on the skin, it feels a little bit sticky. And this vitamin C and silicone suspension is straight up ascorbic acid and silicone. That's pretty much all that's in this product. But because of that, it does have a very thick feeling. Now, when these two are combined together, again, we have a good 10% niacinamide along with that vitamin C 30%. Are they actually combining in a way that is dangerous or toxic to my skin? Most likely the answer is no. However, something does happen between these two that is annoying as hell. They get super, super gummy when they are combined. Again, there could be some chemical bonding that's going on, but it could also just be physical bonding based on the textures of the formula. But I have found that when I put the niacinamide and zinc serum on, and if I layer the vitamin C suspension and silicone over it, it gets super gummed up. It's disgusting, it gets stuck on my fingers, it gets stuck on my face. This product on its own has been known to kind of pill up on my skin, but when you mix these two together, it is just like the next level. Um, they get together and they stick and roll like Elmer's glue. So unless you like the feeling of Elmer's glue on your face, I would not recommend mixing these together at the same time, back to back in your routine. Outside of this, there are also some products that you should mix, specifically because when you mix them, you can actually boost their effectiveness or you can partially science hack your way to a better, more effective skincare routine. However, I'm also considering filming a video on the ordinary skincare routines that are meant to work together that are under certain price points, such as $25 or $50. So vote here and let me know which one you would like to see first. If you learned something from this video, make sure that you that like button. And if you haven't already, be sure to whoosh that subscribe button. Always remember to be beautiful inside and out, and I cannot wait to see you in, boom, this next video. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.